One Piece chapter 814 review. Now this chapter of One Piece was amazing. Absolutely amazing. First of all, let's talk about the two main things. I want to talk about Zoro first of all. Zoro in this chapter pointed out something I've been thinking for a while. I mentioned this right away when I found out. These guys are taking on two of the Yoko. It's stupid. Alright, it's stupid. You do not take on two of the four Yoko. Zoro pointed it out. Because they took out the laboratory on Punk Hazard, they pissed off the Flamingo. And now that they've taken out the laboratory producing the Smiley Fruit on Dracarosa, they've managed to piss off Kaido directly. You know, Kaido going to be going after them in cold blood. And they're going to have to fight him eventually. He said Sanji is at fault here because Sanji abandoned them. Sanji did not say thank you or start with trouble. If Sanji is at fault somewhere, and I agree with Zoro. And if they were being, if they were smart people, they wouldn't worry about Sanji. However, they're not smart. They're the straw hat pirates. So Nami and Zoro have a bit of back and forth about, I guess, morality or what it, the right thing to do. Because Zoro pretty much saying, forget it, let's just leave Sanji. Like, that's, that's what we need to do. And Nami's like, like, like everybody else, is like, no, we have to help Sanji. And after Nami said that, she, you know, she, then Zoro rebuttaled with, stop making shitty excuses for him. And then Nami rebuttaled with, shitty excuses, I'm not doing anything. And you're the one blaming somebody for somebody for something that's not their fault and ignoring their problem. And Luffy then introduced and said, okay, we're not going to get anywhere if we fight. So what he says is, what we, we need to, I need to know why Sanji left. I want to find out. So we're going to go ask Sanji himself. Now, so now we know what the plan is. We know what we're doing after though. We're going to go find Sanji and we're going to ask him what's going on. But here we're thinking interesting. There was another line in the chapter where they were explaining that if Sanji and the girl get married, they were talking about it. And Lucy was like, oh, then he can bring the girl back and she can join the crew. Who cares? One of my subscribers was actually telling me that would happen. And I would just not 100% agree with it, but he was right. He was right. Lucy was completely fine with the girl joining, but that's beside the point. It was then pointed out to Luffy that if Sandy and this woman get married, because Big Mom and Gwen and Yoko, they will become, they will become her underlings. They'll become part of her crew, and Lucy was like, no way in hell is that going to happen. Like, he was like, no way. And then when somebody said, you know, Sanji was leaving, he was like, Sanji going to quit our crew? That's worse than being Big Mom's underling. This is very interesting. Luffy never takes orders from anybody. He didn't even take orders from Whitebeard during the war the best to say that he doesn't take orders from anyone yet. Yet. He sits down. And he takes, and he's like willing to become Big Mom's underling for a period of time, if it means Sanji staying with them. That really said a lot of how much he cared about his crew. We knew he cared, but we didn't know he cared that much. I love that. Now, uh, there isn't much else to really talk about. I really talked about everything besides, of course, the bomb in the room. The thing I have to talk about: Sanji's family. They go, we get into new, we get to hang out with, Mo, with Nekomamushi for a bit, they had gag, he had a gag of like, I don't even know what it was, he had a gag of saying a certain word, I forgot what it was, but you know, he's just obeying all chopper doctor orders, or that, or a four kick with it, or a four kick with that, doctoring orders, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was in a Skype call last night and somebody kept on playing that damn giraffe, and I was stuck in my head. The point is, is that, so, you know, Nekomuchi just obeying Chopper, so they had to take him in. But there was a scene in the chapter that I loved. I loved it. Look where, uh, this female reindeer me were, like, flirting with Chopper. I thought that was hilarious. Because Chopper is not used to being attracted towards other, to the opposite gender. Dude, he spends so much time around humans, the only op people, the females he's ever around are Nami and Robin, and they're human. He feels no attraction to them. Oda even said that's why they let him, 
can take back with them and stuff because they because they are aware he still he not he just sees them he views them in that same way as he was Zoro or Sanji. Like there is no difference between a human male and a human female besides the biological one that he needs to understand as a doctor. There isn't. So that was very interesting to see Chopper handling that situation. He was like all stiff and nervous. It was whole and very uncomfortable. It was really, really well done. But the big bomb in the room. When they're sitting down and talking about it, two things are revealed. One, the people that are you know, the wedding cannot be stopped. There was no escaping the wedding. The ones that arranged it were Big Mom and Sanji's father. And then we get the big elephant. I've been thinking, I've been hyping up this entire video. We get info on the Vine Smoke. We know what the Vine Smoke family are. The Vine Smoke it ends by telling us the Vine Smoke are an underground, infamous underground family of assassins. I think the best example, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the series, I'm standing on multiple occasions. Hunter Hunter Killala. I think his name is, I don't really remember. I never finished it. I didn't really like it very much. But that's for a whole nother video. The point is, that's a good example. Like, both of them have, like, families of assassins. I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, I was blown away. You look at my live reaction. I was mind blown. Mind blown. I was like, wait, what? Assassins? Wow. I'm assuming maybe Sanji's tendency to never hit a woman comes from maybe having to, maybe there was a woman he was friends with or maybe was in a relationship with and, you know, his family killed her or he had to kill her or to protect somebody and, you know, he was like, I vow never to hurt another woman again. That's the only thing I can think of as to why he doesn't hit women. Because there's more to it than just morality. Like, Sanji is willing to die before he hits the woman. He put the entire crew in danger before, just so he doesn't have to hit a woman. Hell, he risked Robin dying in any lobby. Because, let's be honest, he could have easily been in Kali Club, but he left it up to Nami. He left it up to Nami? If Nami had failed, Robin would have died. Think about that. He, is a, he put Robin's hand in somebody weaker than Robin's life in the hand of Nami, who was weaker than him. All because he couldn't hit a woman? There had got to be a reason for that. Did I know for a fact he valued Robin's life more than he could value Kalitha? He could care less. Like, he didn't care when, uh, Kalitha was just, or, or, when Nami was beating up Kalitha. He could care less. So he was like, oh, good job. He's like, we need to save Robin. Kick her ass. He, he supports it. He just can't hit her. But that's for another video. Just, I find it all very, very interesting. Of course, I really don't know. I'm gonna have to do more in-depth thinking about this whole Vine Smoke assassin family thing. It's just a really interesting stuff, and it's hype. If I had to rate this chapter, I'd rate it a 9 out of 10, only because there was like a period of like four chapters that were kind of the straw hat just goofing around and just comedic relief. While that was really good, and we needed that, it was still in a weird place. It was like in between. It was like they all started just, they all kind of just relaxed for like five minutes. And then they're like, okay, time to get serious again. Oh, before I forget, actually, there was a part with Peckham. Yeah, there was a part with Peckham where Peckham claimed where they will, where, Pe where they decided that they're going to get the way they're going to get to Big Mom is by having Peckham guide them there. Which makes a lot of sense, considering Peckham is in their death because Nami, Sanji, and Chopper, and Brooke saved it though. But yeah, this is a very interesting chapter. A bombshell were being dropped left and right. Probably the best chapter of 2016 so far. As a bold statement, considering the past three chapters have been godlike. Also, this truly is the year of Sanji. At first, I was kind of like, well, what is the year of Sanji? Because the past month has just been Sanji-centric stuff. I mean, this is really hype, really good content. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And think One Piece Nation signing out and just... Sanji is a boss. Yeah, have a great day.